You are worthy.
Good morning, welcome to Village. We are blessed to worship together this morning. We have many exciting opportunities and events coming up in our community. Visit the Sunday package for details on all of today's announcements. And if you're new to Village, welcome. The Sunday package is your place to catch up on announcements, sign up for our weekly newsletter, and connect with our ministry leaders via the Digital Connect card. We look forward to meeting you soon. We have two important classes starting in February that we want you to participate in. First, if you are interested in baptism or want to learn more about what baptism means, our next two-week baptism class is on February 18 and 25. That's Sundays after the 1030 service. We'll meet in North Village and cover readiness for baptism, Lordship of Christ, and what it means to follow Jesus. Just email Pastor Pete for more details or write down your interest on a Connect card today. Also, our next Community Basics class is February 18 and 25. If you are new to Village or if you're curious about what it means to be a member of Village, then you are invited to this two evening gathering hosted by our leadership and members. We'll share a meal, get to know one another and explain who we are and what we believe as a missional multicultural community. Community Basics is open to everyone, but we highly encourage new villagers and anyone seeking covenantal membership to attend. Again, that's February 18 and 25, 6.30 to 8 p.m. More details can be found in the Sunday package, including the RSVP link. And we have a new exciting opportunity to learn to speak Spanish together. Here's villagers Becky Sosa and Laura Trimble with more information. Hola, ¿cómo estás? I'm good. How are you? Uh, bien. Me llamo Laura. ¿Y usted? Nice to meet you. My name is Becky. We have lots of different languages spoken at Village and lots of opportunities to learn from each other about different people's languages and the cultures that go with them. So Village is starting a new class called Spanish for Greeting Time to learn some basic phrases and words that you can use during greeting time to greet your brothers and sisters in their own language. Maybe you studied Spanish a long time ago and are afraid to try to use it in real life. Maybe you never studied Spanish. Maybe English is already your second language and you're ready for a third or a fourth language. But either way, you're invited to come join us. Village is a iglesia multicultural. And in this opportunity, our community hispana is very excited to be able to participate in these classes of Spanish. We want to share with you our culture and teach Spanish as a second language. We will see you during four Sundays in the middle of the two services. You are invited to so participate with us and learn a little more about words, oraciones, phrases that you can use every Sunday in our service in the time of salute. También en esta oportunidad quiero invitarlos a ustedes, nuestros hermanos hispanos, que vengan con nosotros y sirvan de asistentes en cada mesa de clases. The best part of this is a chance to meet other church members from different cultures and start friendships so that you can go on and continue to practice this language on your own, knowing that you have friendly faces who are willing to talk to you. To sign up for this class, as you can see the email or the Sunday package for the registration link. One last thing, have you submitted your info for the Village Directory yet? This Wednesday, January 31st, is the deadline. So right now is a great time to scan this QR code or visit the Sunday package to take care of that today. If you remember, we made a directory two years ago, but our community has grown so much since then. Our church photo directory is just one of the ways we get to connect with our missional multicultural community and we don't want to leave you out. So please, right after service or while you have lunch today, use that form to confirm your information and let us know what information you give us permission to print. We look forward to sharing the final directory with you soon. As we move into worship now, please check in today using that Connect card. Let us know you're here and how we can be praying for you in the new year. Also, feel free to use the responsive worship card at any time to record your reflection on the teaching. You can drop these cards in the offering boxes at any time. So with that, let's worship. Welcome to Village. Good morning, Village. Ah, it's so beautiful. You guys all have responded. 
It's so good to be here, and I'm so glad you chose to come to worship the Lord. I'm so glad if you are online and you're here with us, uh, I'm so glad you chose to tune in with us. Really, really grateful to worship God together. And this morning, I would like to share with you a verse, and it's verse 4 of Psalm 66. And it says, all the earth worships you and sing praises to you. They sing praises to your name. This morning, I would like to invite you to shout to the Lord. And sometimes shouts come from, can be coming from different places. It can come from a place of gratitude. You feel so thankful and grateful that you praise, you shout to the Lord. And he takes it because he deserves it. That comes out of as a praise. Sometimes that shout can come from a place of fear. And then you shout as a cry out to the Lord. Like Peter did when he was crying out to the Lord when he started sinking. He needed help. But we shout to the Lord whether that is, whatever the, come, uh, it's the place it's coming from, from you today. It can come from fear, it can come from gratitude, maybe it's joy. You had a very good week. It's coming from a place of joy. You shout to the Lord in praise. He deserves. We shout in the name of the Lord. So I would like to invite you to stand and, and to pray, sing praises. Shout to the name of the Lord because He deserves it. He's the only one who deserves our praise. At your name, the mountains shake and crumble. At your name, the oceans roar and tumble. At your name, angels will bow, the earth will rejoice, your people cry out. Shout 
my Jesus, my Savior, Lord, there is none like you. a joy to be here singing with you this morning, and uh, it's a joy for me to welcome you to our service today. You know, whether you had a difficult week, my week was not easy, um, or whether you've had the best week of your life, um, we're glad you're here. And uh, if you bring that sorrow to the Lord, you're welcome here. If you bring that joy to the Lord, you're welcome here. I have two quick announcements. Uh, I have some good news about elections. And I'm talking about the church elections, not American politics. Um, so I'm happy to report that last Sunday, about 414 of you voted, and all of the items on the ballot were approved. So thank you. 97% uh, or, or more of you um, voted yes to the four new council members, the new nominating committee, as well as some uh, incumbents on the council who are reelected. And then about 99% of you said yes to the new budget of $2.95 million, and hopefully you'll faithfully give towards that this year. And then 100% totally unanimous passing of the new bylaws. So let's just thank, you, uh, thank the Lord for that 
unity. Um, I also wanted to remind you about one announcement that was already up here, but the last three and a half weeks we've been asking, if you consider Village your church home, you're invited to fill out this online form and be part of the new church directory by Wednesday at midnight. Um, it's okay to take your phones out right now, um, scan the QR code, or if you don't know how to do QR codes, you can type directory.villagebeaverton.com. And you can choose which information, which of your contact information to share. You don't have to share everything. Um, and once you sign up online, then we'll be in touch with you about taking pictures in February and hopefully getting that out by Easter. Uh, we're going to take some time in a few minutes here to greet each other. Uh, after I pray, can you help me out? Uh, two things. If you meet somebody who's only been here a few weeks, uh, would you offer to bring them down here? And I'll be here every week or some other pastors. We'd love to give new people a small gift and welcome them. And secondly, uh, during this time, you're welcome to come and find one of the offering boxes and either put your prayer request there or your gifts. And we've moved them just to here and to here, but there's also offering boxes in all four of the alcoves. So let's pray together, and then we'll greet each other. Lord, thank you that you have given us so much. Thank you for the time, the skills, the health, the energy you give to us, and we, we don't want to give you just a tithe, just 10%. We truly want to give you all of ourselves. Um, thank you for the financial resources you've given us. Help us to be good stewards. And we bring you our experiences from this last week. And whether they brought joy or sorrow, we thank you that we don't need to walk our spiritual journey alone. Thank you for this multicultural community in Christ. And we pray that our words and our thoughts this morning will honor you in Jesus' name. Amen. You can stand up. We'll call you back in a few minutes.
Hello Village, my name is Michelle Dutton and I am the Community Development Coordinator here at Village. Many years ago, this church was founded to specifically work with the growing population in Beaverton, especially Marlene Village next door. Our focus was to welcome these families, many who were new to Oregon, and walk with them as they navigate different challenges in their lives. While the ways we have worked with our neighbors has changed over the years, one thing that has not changed is the goal to live missionally and to reach out to our neighbors in need. As the time goes on, our local outreach work has grown to match the needs of our community. This was especially apparent with the pandemic. While the pandemic provided a level of uncertainty for us all, God provided immense opportunities for us to partner with other churches, organizations, and government officials to serve the vulnerable in our community. Through his doing, we were able to run vaccine clinics, free food markets, and help several organizations stay afloat as the needs of our community were increasing rapidly. These opportunities provide a great momentum for us to build on our outreach programs to the neighborhood. And with that momentum, as well as through lots of prayer and discernment, we are excited to announce that we have officially begun a nonprofit, a 501c3 organization that will continue to support and collaborate with local partners to serve the ever-changing needs of our community. We are calling this nonprofit Village Outreach, and we are specifically using this nonprofit to continue our focus for newer members of, to our community, mainly the immigrant and refugee families. We will build on our current programs of ESOL classes, our free legal immigration consultations, and our free monthly medical clinic that provides immigration and health exams. We are very excited for this new venture into Village's history, and I'm looking forward to working with you all in this next phase of our outreach programs. Please stay tuned for more volunteer opportunities and outreach events in the future. Thank you. Luke 8, 22 through 25. One day, Jesus said to his disciples, let us go over to the other side of the lake. So they got into a boat and set out. As they sailed, he fell asleep. A squall came down on the lake so that the boat was being swamped and they were in great danger. The disciples went and woke him, saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters. The storm subsided, and all was calm. Where is your faith? he asked his disciples. In fear and amazement, they asked one another, Who is this? He commands even the winds and the water, and they obey him. Muy buenos días. Good morning. ¿Cómo están ustedes? How are you doing? Bien. Bien, bien. Yo soy Mauricio Rivas, y para mí es un privilegio el poder estar esta mañana acá compartiendo el mensaje de Dios. I'm Mauricio Rivas, and for me it's a privilege to be here sharing the Word of God this morning with you. Y me gustaría comenzar con una oración. And I would like this uh, time uh, with a prayer. Me acompañan. Uh, can you pray with me? Señor, te damos gracias. Lord, we're so thankful. En este momento. Uh, at this moment. Gracias porque este es el día que has creado para nosotros. Uh, thank you because this is the day you have created for us. Nos gozamos en ti, Señor. We rejoice in you, Lord. Señor, háblanos al corazón por medio de tu palabra. Uh, Lord, uh, speak to our heart uh, through your word. Nosotros solamente somos tus instrumentos. We are only your instrument. Espíritu Santo. Holy Spirit. Bienvenido a este lugar. I welcome to this place. En tu nombre yo oro, Jesús. In your name we pray, Jesus. Amen. Amen. Amados queridos. Uh, my beloved ones. Ya estamos a punto de terminar el mes de enero. Y hace ya un mes que celebrábamos Navidad. 
Uh, we are about to end the month of January, and it's been a month since we were celebrating Christmas. Aún para los cristianos, escuchar la palabra Navidad es tratar o traer a la mente la escena de Jesús en el pesebre. Uh, and even for Christians uh, to hear the word Christmas is to bring to mind the scene of baby Jesus in the manger. Los pastores en el campo y los sabios viniendo del oriente a adorar a Jesús. Uh, the shepherds in the fields and the wise men coming from the east to worship Jesus. Y la imagen que tenemos de Navidad no es nada malo. Lo malo es quedarse pensando en Jesús como ese bebé y nada más. Uh, the image we have of Christmas is not bad. Uh, the bad thing is to keep thinking of Jesus as that baby and nothing more. Sin darnos cuenta, al pensar en Jesús, pasamos de esta escena y a la celebración de Semana Santa lo vemos en la cruz y en la resurrección. Uh, without realizing it, when we think of Jesus, we move from the scene of the Christmas celebration to the Easter celebration, and we see him on the cross and in his resurrection. Todo esto puede llegar a ser solamente un acto de participación y de una tradición religiosa que no nos sirve de mucho. And all of these uh, can become just an act of participation in a religion tradition uh, that is of a little use for us and um, we lose sight of who our Lord Jesus really is. Y perdemos de vista quien verdaderamente es nuestro Señor Jesús. And we have to be careful not to lose sight of who really Jesus is. Cuando hablamos de Jesús, estamos hablando de alguien que es mucho más que un bebé en un pesebre. Uh, when we're talking about Jesus, we're talking about someone that is more than just the baby in a manger. Alguien que es más que un solo hombre que fue colgado en una cruz. Uh, someone who is more than just the man that was hanged on a cross. Estamos hablando de alguien que cuando estuvo aquí en la tierra se destacó en gran manera con su poder, su autoridad estamos hablando de Dios mismo uh, we are talking about someone who when he was here on earth was greatly noted for his power and authority and when we, to we are talking about uh, him we're talking about God himself él es el Dios manifestado en carne. He is the God manifested in flesh. Él es el Dios viviendo entre los hombres para llevar a cabo la voluntad del Padre celestial. Jesus is God living among men to carry out the will of our heavenly Father. Revelándonos al Padre y siendo él el camino a la salvación y la vida eterna. Uh, revealing the Father to us and being the way to salvation and eternal life. Él es Emmanuel. He is Emmanuel. Dios con nosotros. God y with aun, us. Y aunque Él ascendió al cielo después de su resurrección. And He is Emmanuel, God with us. And although He ascended to heaven after His resurrection. Él prometió estar con nosotros todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. He promised to be with us every day until the end of the world. Amen. Amen. Y un día regresará por su iglesia y reinaremos juntamente con él. And one day he will return for his church and we will reign with him. Eso es lo que yo creo. This is what I believe and what the Bible said. ¿Usted cree lo mismo que yo? Do you believe what the Bible says and what I'm saying right now? Amen, amen. Amen. Al mirar el texto que leíamos esta mañana, as we look at the text that we were reading this morning, debemos tener cuidado de no pensar a la ligera, ya que es un texto muy conocido. We must be very careful not to think lightly since this is a very well-known uh, passage of the scripture. Y el error que podemos cometer es creer y pensar que ya conocemos la historia. And the mistake we can make is to believe and think that we already know uh, this passage, this story. Las lecciones de los discípulos que aprendieron en ese día que navegaban por ese lago fueron de mucho valor para ellos y hoy para cada uno de nosotros. The lessons that the, disi the disciples learned on that day uh, when they sailed on that, on that lake were of a great value for them, but they are of a great value for us nowadays. 
Y es más para nosotros porque tenemos las promesas, evidencias escritas del poder y de la autoridad de Jesús. And it, and it is more so for us because we have the promises and, and uh, uh, written evidence of Jesus, power and authority. La vida cristiana, mis amados queridos, es una vida donde aprendemos a caminar con Jesús. The Christian life, my beloved brothers and sisters, is a life where we need to learn to walk with Jesus. Cada experiencia, cada circunstancia de la vida siempre deja un aprendizaje. Every experience in life, every circumstances that we have to go through, always leaves us a learning experience. La palabra discípulo en el texto griego del Nuevo Testamento es matetes. Esto significa aprendiz, alguien que aprende de su maestro. The word uh, disciple in the Greek text, text of the New Testament is, ma I'm going to say, if somebody speaks Greek in here, I'm going to apologize ahead of time. Uh, but the word is matetis, that is an apprentice who learned from his master. Los discípulos de Jesús... Seguimos a nuestro maestro y tratamos día a día de estar cerca de él. As disciples of Jesus, we follow our master and try day by day to learn to be close to him. Escuchar su voz. To listen to his voice. Conversar con él. Uh, to talk, to converse with him. Y hacer lo que él nos pide en su palabra que hagamos. And to do what? He asked us to do in his word. Ahora bien, no todo el que cree en él es un discípulo de Jesús. Now, uh, I want you to pay attention to this. Not everyone who believes in Jesus is a disciple of Jesus. La Biblia dice que aún los demonios creen en él y tiemblan. The Bible says that even demons believe and tremble. Amen. Amen. Y no todos los que vienen a una iglesia son discípulos de Jesús. Me atrevo a decir que si no estamos obedeciendo la escritura, solamente somos simpatizantes del evangelio de Cristo Jesús. And I dare to say that if we are not obeying a scripture, we are only sympathizers of the gospel of Jesus Christ. Tenemos que Hacer diferencia entre un creyente y un discípulo de Cristo. And this morning we have to make a difference. We need to or we must um, differentiate between what is a believer and a disciple of uh, Christ. El creyente cree en Jesús y en muchas cosas más. Uh, the believer believes in Jesus and many other things. Se define como persona de, mien, de mente abierta y el problema es que son tan abiertos que al final casi siempre terminan confundidos. These believers, they define themselves as an open-minded people and the problem is that they are too way open-minded that at the end they almost always end up confused. Sin embargo, However, el discípulo tiene una vida progresiva de crecimiento espiritual. However, the disciple has a progressive life of a spiritual growth. La formación espiritual en el discípulo de Cristo incluye la santificación, la transformación de su vida. A spiritual formation in the disciple's life or a disciple of Christ includes sanctification and transformation of uh, his life. El discípulo de Cristo nace en fe. The disciple of Christ is born uh, by faith or in faith. Camina en fe. Walk in faith. Y se desarrolla en fe. And he develops in faith. Cada acontecimiento en su vida le enriquece aun cuando no se entiende lo que pasa. Every event in the life of a disciple of Christ uh, Even when they go through trials or difficult situations, it will enrich their life. Amen. Amen. Volvamos ahora al texto de Lucas 8, 22, 25. And let's go together to the reading we have of Luke uh, chapter 8, verse 22. La Biblia dice, un día subió Jesús con sus discípulos a una barca. And the Bible says, one day Jesus uh, said to his disciples, uh, let's go over. Mm -hmm. Luego... Le dice, crucemos al otro lado del lago. 
And he says, let's go over to the other side of the lake. Y así partieron. And uh, so they went. Si hay algo que caracteriza la vida de un verdadero discípulo de Cristo es la obediencia. If there is something that characterizes the life of a believer is obedience. De hecho, el éxito de una vida cristiana es la obediencia a la palabra de Dios. In fact, the success of a Christian life is the obedience to the word of God. Amen. Cuando vemos el texto encontramos que Jesús le dijo a sus discípulos, crucemos al otro lado. When we see the text, we look that the, Jesus told the disciples, let's go across over the other side of the lake. Aquí podemos ver que ninguno de sus discípulos cuestionó el mandato de Jesús. We can see here in this passage that none of the disciples questioned Jesus' command. Ninguno le dijo, Señor, es muy noche. No one uh, said to Jesus, Lord, it is too late. Señor, estamos cansados. Lord, we're so tired. Señor, tenemos hambre. Lord, we're so hungry. Señor, no tengo tiempo. Oh, they didn't say, Lord, I'm sorry, I don't have time now. <laughs> la obediencia a la palabra de Dios muestra madurez espiritual. Obedience to the word of God shows your spiritual maturity. Amen. Amen. Algo que veo que Jesús nunca pide favores a sus discípulos. One thing that I'm seeing through scripture is that Jesus never asked a favor to a disciple. El discípulo de Jesús está para obedecer lo que el Señor nos pide a nosotros que hagamos. If you are a disciple of Jesus, we are called as disciples just to obey what the Lord is asking us to do all the time. Amen. Amen. La obediencia es parte esencial de la fe cristiana. Jesús mismo dice la palabra, fue obediente hasta la muerte y muerte de cruz. Obedience is an essential part of a Christian faith. Jesus himself was obedient, says the word of God in Philippians 2.8. Uh, He was obedient to death. On the cross. Para nosotros, los discípulos de Cristo, el hecho de tomar nuestra cruz y seguirle significa obediencia. For us, the disciples of Jesus, to take up our cross and follow him means obedience. La Biblia dice que debemos mostrar nuestro amor a Jesús obedeciéndole. The Bible says that the only way to show how much we love Jesus is through obeying him, his word. Jesús dijo, si me amáis, guardad mis mandamientos. Uh, Jesus says, if you love me, keep my commands. Un cristiano, escuche bien, dije un cristiano, no discípulo. A Christian, and listen to me very well, I said a, Chris, a Christian, not a disciple. Un cristiano que no obedece los mandatos de Cristo, se le puede preguntar con toda razón, ¿por qué me llamáis Señor, Señor, y no haces lo que yo te pido? A Christian who does not obey the commands of Christ may rightly or rightly be asked why he called Jesus Lord, Lord, and do not do what he's asked uh, to do by Jesus. El discípulo de Cristo en esencia está llamado a obedecer. The disciple of Christ in essence is called to obey him. Amados, si amamos a Dios, le obedeceremos no seremos perfectos en nuestra obediencia, pero nuestro deseo debería ser el someternos al Señor y a su palabra. Uh, beloved, if we love God, we will obey him. We will not be perfect in our obedience, but our desire should be to be submitted, to submit our life to the Lord and his word. Ese día Jesús le pidió a sus discípulos pasar al otro lado. If we see on the text, Jesus asked the disciples to go across uh, to the other side of the lake. Ellos iban a la tierra de Gadara a cumplir una misión divina. They were going to the land of Gadara to fulfill a divine appointment or a divine mission. No iban de vacaciones. They were not going on a vacation. Jesús tenía propósitos divinos como lo es siempre. Jesus has divine purpose, purposes as he always does. Jesús es soberano. Jesus is our sovereign God. Y Jesús tiene todo en control. And Jesus has always everything Amen. in control. In control. El Amen. primer propósito era con sus discípulos mostrarles cómo enfrentar las tormentas externas y las tormentas internas del corazón. The, the first purpose we can find in this part of the passage uh, was that it was with 
uh, his disciples or to the disciples to show them how to face the external storms in life and the internal sto storms that rises in the heart. Y el segundo propósito con ese hombre poseído de un demonio en la ciudad llamada Gadara. And the second purpose was to meet this demon possessed man in the city called Gadara. Cuando estudiamos cristología, vemos tres elementos muy importantes. When we study Christology, we find three very important elements. Cristología ontológica. Ontological Christology. Cristología funcional. Functional Christology. Y cristología soteriológica. And soteriological Christology. ¿Por qué menciono esto? Why, why I mention this? Porque la cristología ontológica lo que vemos es la naturaleza del ser de Jesucristo. Because in the ontological Christology, what we see is the nature of the being of Jesus Christ. Jesús tuvo un desarrollo normal de niño a hombre. Jesus developed as a normal child from a child to a man. Jesús fue tentado. Jesus was tempted. Jesús lloró. He cried. Jesús mostró compasión para las personas. Jesus showed compassion uh, for people. 100% hombre. 100% man. Y 100% Dios. And 100% Y en esa ontología Jesús se durmió en el barco mostrando su humanidad. And it was on that ontology that Jesus f uh, fell asleep in the boat showing his humanity. Su sueño fue tan profundo que el fuerte viento no le despertaba. The scripture says that his sleep was so deep that the strong wind will not wake him. Jesús, dormido en medio de una tormenta, muestra su absoluta paz, su control bajo cualquier circunstancia. And Jesus, uh, asleep in the midst of a storm, show his absolute peace. His control of circumstances. Jesus is nuestro shalom. Jesus is our shalom. Si tienes a Jesús en tu corazón, estamos llamados a vivir en paz en medio de cualquier adversidad. Dígame, por favor. If you have Jesus Christ as your personal Savior, we are called to live in peace in the midst of any adversary that arises. Amen. Estaba en paz. He was at peace. No había tempestad en su alma. There was no storm in his soul. Jesús dormido nos recuerda momentos de adversidad donde parece que Dios está dormido o de indiferente a nuestras aflicciones. And Jesus asleep reminds us of moments of adversity where it seems to us that God is asleep or indifferent to our afflictions. Muchos han creado un evangelio distorsionado piensan que hoy que están en Cristo nada adverso le va a pasar. Uh, many have created a distorted gospel thinking that now that we are in Christ nothing adverse will happen to us. Amados, Jesús es paz en medio de cualquier tormenta. Beloved, you have to know that Jesus Christ is peace in the midst of any storm. Jesús es paz en medio de cualquier adversidad. And Jesus is peace in the midst of all adversity. Amén. Amen. Amado, no olvidemos, como discípulos de Jesús, las adversidades no están para deformarnos, sino para moldear nuestra fe. Uh, beloved, please, we need to learn, we must learn and understand that adversities are not here to distort us, but to shape up our faith. Amen. Amen. Las adversidades no están para matar nuestra fe, sino para que nuestra fe pueda crecer. Adversities are not meant to kill our faith but to make our faith grow. Alguien dijo, Jesús dormido es más poderoso que la, el diablo despierto. I mean, someone said, Jesus asleep is mightier than the devil awake. I mean, mira qué tremendo. This is very interesting. El Salmo 93, 4, mira lo que dice. Uh, Psalm 94, 3, look, look with me what it says. Jehová en las alturas es más poderoso que el estruendo de las muchas aguas, Alleluia. más que las gruesas ondas del mar. Aleluya, mightier. Then the thunder, yes, clap for the Lord if you're reading that text. Mightier than the thunder of the great waters, mightier than the breakers of the sea, the Lord on high is mighty. That's our God. Este es nuestro Dios. This is our God. Yes, Un Dios like soberano, him. yes. He's Thank a sovereign you. God. Un Dios yes. soberano He's que a, tiene todo en control. He's a sovereign God that has everything in control. Un Dios poderoso en batalla. 
He's a powerful God that fights for us. Y la parte más importante es que él pelea mis batallas. And the important part in this is that he's the one who fight our battles. Amen. Amen. Si Cristo va en la barca, si Cristo va en tu barca, eso es todo. Vaya dormido, vaya despierto, Hallelujah. ¿qué importa? Hallelujah. If Christ is in the boat, that is all that counts. Whether he's asleep or awake, What does it matter if he's in our boat? That's enough. That's what we need. Amen. Amen. Jesús ya lo dijo. Yo estoy con vosotros todos los días hasta el fin del mundo. And Jesus already said, I'm with you until the end of the world. Jesús está acá con nosotros. He's right here with us. Jesús está en mi corazón. He's in our hearts. Cualquier problema, cualquier adversidad, But si Jesús está en la barca, ¿por qué temeré? If any adversity arises, any problem, if Jesus is in the boat of our life, why should we be, why should we, uh, will be afraid? Amen. Amen. Sorry, my tongue got so excited as he does. <laughs> ¿Sabes por qué Jesús dormía aquel día? You know why Jesus was sleeping on that day? Porque él tiene siempre todo en control. Because he always has everything in control. Es por eso que necesitamos descansar en Dios. And that is why we need to rest in the Lord. Amados, el descansar en el Señor es aprendido. Lord, uh, to rest, my beloved, to rest in the Lord is It needs to be learned. Mira, la Biblia registra que Pedro estaba en la cárcel con peligro de muerte. When we read, there is a passage on the Bible that when we read that Peter was incarcerated, he was uh, almost uh, in prison in danger of death. death. ¿Y sabes lo que Pedro estaba haciendo? And you know, when we read this passage, you know what Peter was doing at that moment? ¿Sabes lo que Pedro estaba haciendo? You know what he was doing? Estaba... Durmiendo. He was sleeping. <laughs> en medio de un gran problema, Pedro dormía. In the middle of this big trouble that he was in, he was sleeping. <laughs> Qué tremendo. Mira lo que dice Hechos 12, 6. Look with me what act, uh, chapter 12, uh, Y cuando Herodes le iba a sacar, aquella misma noche, estaba Pedro durmiendo entre dos soldados. <laughs> Uh, the night before Herod, Herod uh, was to bring him to trial, Peter was sleeping between two soldiers. Sujeto con dos cadenas. Bound with two chains. Y los guardas delante de la puerta custodiaban la cárcel. And sentries stood guard at the entrance. ¿Cuándo Pedro había aprendido a descansar en Dios? When do you think that Peter learned to rest and trust <laughs> in recuerda? God? Aquel día en la tempestad. You know when that happened? That day in the storm. Lo que nos pasa actualmente, cualquiera que sea nuestro problema, está para que aprendamos y para que nuestra fe sea tonificada. Whatever that happened in our life now that we're walking in Christ, is for our faith to be toned, to be shaped up. Ahora bien, cuando vamos al versículo 24, dice la Biblia, y vinieron a él y le despertaron diciendo, maestro, maestro, que perecemos. Uh, if we see chapter, uh, verse 24, Uh, the disciples went and woke him up saying, Master, Master, we're going to drown. Despertando él, reprendió al viento y a las olas y cesaron y se hizo bonanza. He got up and rebuked the wind and the raging waters and uh, the storm subsided. Amen. And all was calm. Amen. Este es el Dios, amados. Que nosotros adoramos. This is the God we worship, my beloved ones. Dice la palabra, Jehová en las alturas es más poderoso que el estruendo de las aguas, amados, más que las recias ondas del mar. And we were reading how we have a mighty God that is stronger than the waters that raise in the oceans. Amen. Amen. Aquel día los discípulos se asustaron. That day the, the disciples uh, uh, got afraid. Ellos yes. sabían. Uh, they knew. Humanamente hablando que estaban en una situación desesperada en un momento sumamente peligroso. They knew, humanly speaking, that they were going through a very difficult time. They were in danger. Siendo ellos pescadores de profesión, sabían que era imposible salir con vida en esa tempestad. Uh, being themselves a fisherman as profession, they knew that they were not going to be able to live a life from that storm. Seguramente muchos de nosotros nos hemos sentido así alguna vez. Uh, and probably many of us has uh, felt that way, that way uh, one way or another, or one time or another. O puede ser incluso que estés atravesando por una situación similar or maybe, en este momento. Or maybe you are going through a very uh, difficult situation at this very moment. Nadie está excepto de las dificultades uh, no, que surgen. 
Go viviendo ahead. en este mundo caído, amados. Uh, no one is exempt uh, from the difficulties that arises while living in this fallen world. Es por eso, mis amados hermanos, que es tan importante entender la naturaleza de las pruebas para luego ver cómo nosotros debemos ejercitar nuestra fe. And that is why, my beloved ones, brothers and sisters, it is important to understand the nature of the trials and then see how we should exercise our faith when we are in the midst of trouble. Amado querido, las tormentas de esta vida no pueden destruir los planes de Dios. Beloved ones, have this cleared in your mind. The storms of these lives cannot destroy God's plan for our lives. Amen. Amen. Este acontecimiento está registrado en tres de los evangelios y todos muestran no la preocupación sino el pánico que colectivamente tenían todos los que estaban en esa barca. Uh, this passage that we're looking at this morning is recorded in three of the gospels and they all show not the concerns but the panic that all of those in the boat collectively had. Amados, el temor es parte de nuestra naturaleza humana. Beloved, fear is part of our, our human nature. Lo que no podemos permitir es vivir todo el tiempo atemorizados. What we cannot allow is to live our whole life in fear. Nosotros tenemos derecho a tener una lucha inicial con el temor. We have the right to have an initial struggle with fear. Lo que no tenemos derecho es dejarnos dominar por el temor. What we do not have the right to do is to let ourselves be dominated by fear. Debemos enseñarle a esta mente y a este corazón que tenemos a nuestro lado nuestro Dios todopoderoso. Aleluya. We must teach this mind and this heart that we have at our side our almighty God who takes good care of us. Amen. Amen. Con frecuencia como hijos de Dios dudamos en tiempo de adversidad. Uh, often as the children of as a child of God we doubt in times of adversity. Y olvidamos las promesas maravillosas que están en la escritura. And we forget these wonderful promises that the Lord has already give us in scripture. Es posible que esta mañana tú cargas con algún problema. Probably this morning you're carrying this uh, big problem. Y el Señor tiene esta palabra para ti. And the Lord has this word for you. Dice Isaías 43, 1, 2. As Isaías 43, 1, 2 says. No temas porque yo te he redimido. Do not fear for I have redeemed you. Te he llamado por tu nombre. I have summed you by name. Oh, mira qué hermoso. Look at this, how beautiful. Dios dice, tú eres mío. God is saying, you are mine. Cuando cruces por las aguas, yo estaré contigo. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. Cuando cruces por los ríos, no te cubrirán sus aguas. And when you pass through the rivers, they will not sweep over you. <laughs> y cuando camines por el fuego, no te quemarás ni abrazarán las llamas. And when you walk through the fire, you will not be burned. The flames will not set you ablaze. Que el temor no paralice tu fe. Don't let fear paralyze your faith. Amen. Amen. Las tormentas que enfrentamos tienen ese efecto en nosotros. Because the storm we face had that effect on us. Ellas nos hacen pensar que todo está perdido. They make us think that everything is lost. Que Dios está adormecido y que no puede librarnos. And that God is asleep and, and there's nothing that can deliver us. Muchos de nosotros nos damos muy pronto por vencido en medio de la adversidad. Many of us gave up too soon in the midst of adversity. Los discípulos estaban a punto de experimentar y ver al Hijo de Dios haciendo un despliegue extraordinario de poder y autoridad sobre los elementos de la naturaleza. And when you see the passage we were reading, the disciples were about to experience and see the Son of God making an extraordinary display of his power and authority over the elements of nature. No hay cosa más maravillosa que saber que nuestras vidas están en las manos del Dios Todopoderoso. How wonderful it is to know that our, our lives are in the hands of the Almighty God. ¿Crees esto? Do you believe that in your life? ¿Crees esto? Do you believe this? Gloria a su nombre. Uh, Blaise be the name of the Lord. Jesús 
Reprendió al viento y a las olas. The scripture says that Jesus rebuked the wind and the raging waters. Y cesaron y se hizo bonanza. And the storm subsided and all was calm. Pon atención lo que Jesucristo le dijo a sus discípulos. Uh, and pay attention to what the, the, uh, Jesus Christ told the disciples. ¿Dónde está tu fe? He asked, where is your faith? ¿Dónde está tu fe? Where is your faith? Amado, tú que estás pasando por adversidades My difíciles. beloved one, you that, that are going through a difficult time. ¿Qué haces? What do you do? What are you doing? ¿Por qué te preocupas? Why are you worried? ¿Dónde está tu fe? Question is, where is your faith now? ¿Te has preguntado? Have you asked yourself? <laughs> Amados queridos, la palabra tiene poder. The word of God has power. Somos lo que Dios más ama. We are what God loved the most. Jesús ya despierto, reprendió al viento, a las olas y reprendió a los discípulos. Jesus now awake, rebuked the wind and the waves, but he also rebuked his disciples. Mucha persona lo único que hacen cuando pasan por adversidad es quejarse, quejarse y quejarse. Many of us when we go through adversity, what we do the most is complain and complain and complain. Y lo que no saben es que cada vez que se quejan están debilitando su fe. And what is happening every time we complain instead of praising and uh, bringing to mind the scriptures, the promises of God is making our faith weaker and weaker and weaker because we are making, uh, we are, our words has power as well. Amen. Amen. Jesús reprendió a sus discípulos por su falta de fe. Jesus rebuked his disciples for their lack of faith. Jesús preguntó, ¿dónde está vuestra fe? Jesus asked, where is your faith? Amados, necesitamos entender, los discípulos de Jesús pasaremos por diferentes adversidades. Beloved, you must understand this morning that as disciples of Christ, of Jesus Christ, we will go through difficulties. Muchas de ellas serán muy dolorosas. Many of those adversities and difficulties will be very painful. Pero lo que nos sostiene, amados queridos, y lo que nos mantiene es nuestra fe puesta en el Dios Todopoderoso. Aleluya, but what will sustains us and to keep us will be our faith in our almighty God. Fíjate que él no lo reprendió por haberlo despertado and o if, por haber clamado pidiendo ayuda. And if you see, he didn't re rebuke the disciples because they woke, woke him up or wake him up or because they were asking for help. De hecho, ni siquiera le estaban pidiendo ayuda, tuvieron la osadía de faltarle el respeto a Jesús. And you know what? If you see scripture, they were not even asking Jesus for help. They were complaining. They were being disrespectful to Jesus. <laughs> en el libro de Marcos dice que los discípulos le dijeron, ¿no te importa que perecemos? And if you see the book, the same passage in the book of Mark, there is a little bit more in there that, that the disciples told Jesus, don't you care that we are drowning? <laughs> Imagínate, esos discípulos malcriados. Imagine how there in these disciples were. Y es like que cuando, some of us. Y es que cuando estamos pasando tormentas o adversidades, el miedo y la impotencia de resolver nuestras situaciones nos hace pensar y decir insensateces. And it is uh, very interesting when we are going through storms of adversity, the fear and the helplessness to solve our situation make us think and say foolish things. Como pastor, escucho esta canción muchas veces. As a pastor, I always hear this song many times. Yeah. Dios me ha abandonado, pastor. God has abandoned me, pastor. A Dios no le importo. Uh, he doesn't care for me. No siento a Dios cerca de I mí. I don't feel his presence. Pastor, estoy solo. Pastor, I'm alone. Dios no me ama. God doesn't love me. Mire lo que estoy pasando. Look what I'm going through, Mire pastor. Mire mi situación. Look at my situation. Oh, amado querido, tú tienes que entender que no importa por lo que estés pasando, nuestro Dios es un Dios todopoderoso y Él ha prometido estar todos los días con nosotros. You have to leave, leave this place understanding that our God will be with us because He has promised to be with us all the time in, in any situation. Amen. Amen. Dios es nuestro amparo y fortaleza. 
nuestro pronto auxilio en las tribulaciones. God is our refu refuge and strength and ever present help in trouble. Por tanto, no temeremos aunque la tierra sea removida. Therefore, the word of God says, we will not fear through Though the earth give away. Amen. Yo creo esta palabra. I do believe this word. ¿Tú la crees? Do you? Jehová es mi roca y mi castillo y mi libertador. The Lord is my rock, my fortress and my deliverer. Fortaleza mía. My God is my rock. En él confiaré. In him I will trust. Mi escudo y la fortaleza de mi salvación. Aleluya. Mi alto refugio. My shield Aleluya. and the horn of my salvation. My Gloria stronghold. Amen. <laughs> Praise Amados, be to God. Nuestra fe crece cuando ponemos en práctica. Beloved, our faith grows, grows when we put it into practice. Y no olvidamos su palabra. And when we don't forget his promises. Su palabra tiene poder. The word of God has power. Nuestra fe debe estar basada en la palabra, en lo que Él nos dice a través de ella. And our faith must be based on the word of God and what, what he has already spoken to us. La palabra del Señor es más poderosa que cualquier tormenta his que word, se puede levantar en el camino. His word is, is bigger and stronger than any storm that can arise on our way. Jesús mostró a sus discípulos un aspecto de él que ellos no conocían. If we see scripture, Jesus showed his disciples an aspect of him that they did not know. Número uno, ellos nunca habían visto a alguien con tal autoridad que Num corresponde solo a Dios. Number one, they had never seen someone with such an authority that only correspond to God. Only Número to dos, God. ellos estaban sorprendidos al ver a alguien que era más poderoso que la tormenta. Number two, they were surprised to see someone who was mightier than the storm. Y número tres, ellos se preguntaron a su asombro, a su, en su temor, ¿Quién es este que aún los vientos y las aguas le obedecen? And number three, they wondered in their astonishment of fear, who is this that he commanded even the winds and the waters and they obeyed him. La idea que tenían de Cristo cambió cuando vieron su autoridad sobre el viento y sobre las aguas. The idea that they have of Christ changed when they saw his authority over the wind and the waters. Amado, deseo terminar diciéndote, nuestro Señor Jesús se revela y se da a conocer a cada discípulo que camina en una comunión con Él. Beloved, let me finish or let me conclude by telling you that our Lord Jesus revealed himself and makes himself known to every disciple who walks in communion with him. Las tormentas son tiempos de prueba y aprendemos tres cosas. The storms are uh, times of trials and we learn from them. Dios es soberano y nada pasa sin un propósito. God is a sovereign God and nothing happens without a purpose. Las pruebas sacan a flote lo que verdaderamente está en nuestro corazón. You know that trials bring out what, it, what is truly in our heart. A través de las pruebas aprendemos a depender de Dios. And number three, you have to remember this. Through trials, we learn to depend on God. Amen. We learn dependence on God. No somos autosuficientes. We are not self-sufficient, my brothers. No tenemos la solución a todas las cosas. We don't have the solution to everything. Nuestro Padre Celestial tiene la última palabra. Y del único que debemos depender es de Él. Our God has always the last word and He is the only one we must depend on. Amen. Tengamos la seguridad de que el Señor todavía es capaz de cualquier tormenta. Let's be assured that the Lord is still able to still the storm in your life. Amen. Amen. Y también es capaz de ser nuestro muro defensor, un refugio en la tormenta. And he's still also able to be our defensive wall, a shelter in the storm. Cuando desarrollamos una vida de comunión con el Señor en nuestro diario vivir. When we develop a life of communion with the Lord in our daily living. Aprenderemos a conocerle en cada situación que enfrentamos, por muy difícil que esta sea. We will learn to know him in every situation we face, no matter how difficult. It may be. 
entenderemos cada circunstancia como una nueva oportunidad para aprender más de la grandeza y la gloria del Señor. Through trials, we will understand every circumstances as a new opportunity to learn more of the greatness of the glory of the Lord. Nuestra fe crece en la medida que le conocemos día a día. Our faith grows as we get to know him day by day. Amen. Amen. Vamos a orar. Let's pray. Señor, te damos gracias en esta oportunidad. Lord, we're so thankful uh, this morning. Es mi oración que tu palabra no regrese vacía. It is my prayer that the word won't return empty or void. El único que conoce nuestras adversidades eres tú, Espíritu Santo. The only one who knows uh, our heart, it is you, Holy Spirit. Si en esta mañana hay corazones cargados de adversidades. This morning, if there is a heart that is um, uh, carrying uh, a heavy adversity. Si algún discípulo tuyo está pasando por alguna tormenta. If a, one of your disciples is going through a storm. Espíritu Santo, de una forma maravillosa, milagrosa. Spirit, uh, Holy Spirit, in a marvelous and miraculous way. Da paz please en bring, medio de la tormenta. Please, please bring peace in the midst of the storm. En tu nombre damos gracias, Jesús. In your name we praise. Amén, Dios. Thank you, Lord Jesus. Amen and amen. Blessings, my brothers. Thank you, Pastor. Beloved, let us take time to reflect on what we've just heard preach. As the chapter in James tells us, we are to be doers of the Word of God, not only hearers. So what is it that the Holy Spirit is saying to you right now in the midst of your storm? knowing that Jesus is with you. So let's think about what we've just heard and how to put it into action. You can talk to the person next to you. You may go into one of the alcoves on the other side of the sanctuary. You can write on the worship response card, write your prayer requests on the connect card and deposit that in one of the boxes. What has the Holy Spirit shown you this morning about who God is and how we're to trust him. Let's take this time to reflect and to consider this.
I would like to invite you to sing this response song. But this song is actually written in Korean by a Korean brother. Um, and a, a lot of you might know is Jeu Kim. He's been here a couple times. So we will sing it in Korean to honor the him and his native language and how he originally wrote it. And then we'll sing it in English. I'll try my best to sing in Korean. Um, but you can see the translation and I hope as we're singing in Korean, you can look at the translation. Let the words sink in your heart. And then you can sing it in English with us at the end. So that
trust that we build as we continue to put our faith in him, our trust in him. May our faith be firm, founded in him and in him alone. That's how we praise him this morning.
Dear brothers and sisters, now it is time for us to return to the ordinary life uh, where God has sent us. Perhaps we, as we pass through this week, fierce winds blow, we may face times of fear and uncertainty that will fill our boat with water, just like times Jesus' disciples experienced. However, dear brothers and sisters, even if such an unexpected moment comes to us, I hope we remember this. The Lord is still with us in our boat. As long as the Lord is in our boat, we are in the safety place. So I hope that you will have faith that our Lord inside the boat seems greater than the storm blowing outside the boat. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious to you. The Lord turn his face towards you and give you peace. Go in peace. See you next week.